Customer service done right can be your company's single biggest competitive advantage. Welcome to the customer service revolution. Join customer service authority and best-selling author John DeJulius as he interviews leaders who are revolutionizing their industries. This is more than a podcast, though. It's a movement. The customer service revolution is a radical overthrow of conventional business mentality designed to transform what customers and employees experience. If you are a revolutionary customer service leader who's ready to stop competing on price and obsessed with building a brand that people cannot live without, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Customer Service Revolution Podcast with John DeJulius. In this week's episode, John talks with Dave Murray, Senior Customer Experience Consultant for the DeJulius Group, about how the best customer service companies in the world all have a customer experience action statement. This is a clear call to action of what each and every employee should intentionally achieve every time they interact with a customer. In this episode, you'll learn how a customer experience action statement is different from a company's vision, purpose, and core values the impact it has on a company's customer service culture, how to create your own customer experience action statement, and how this helps you create a credo card that can serve as your employee's customer experience handbook. Now here's your host, John DeJulius. Hello, revolutionaries, and welcome to podcast number 43. This is John DeJulius, Chief Revolution Officer, also known as the authority on world-class customer service, also known as the customer experience gangster, customer experience mafia, and all those names have been given to me by myself. And today I have the DeJulius Group Senior Customer Experience Consultant, Murray Dave Murray. Welcome, Dave. Hey, John. Thanks for having me back again. It's great to see you. Always great to be with the the CX Gangster. CX Gangster. I I can't decide which one I like the best. So I just have so many. All right, Dave. Today is a a podcast number 43 is an exciting podcast. I, I think I probably say this every time, but this is one of my favorite topics. It's commandment number one in our methodology and it's it's was originally and we're making a uh, an announcement what do you call that when when they uh make a a first time exclusive yeah this is this is breaking news so i was gonna say john you you say every podcast is exciting and you're right but we don't always have breaking news but today we have breaking news we have breaking news like like probably if you if you turn on cnn once they hear this they'll they'll probably go there it is going (laughs) to send shock waves throughout the customer experience world so a little history uh the first commandment of the julius group's 10 commandments has always been the customer service vision statement it's what we do first with all our our clients and it's huge and we love it and and we still love it but there's been an evolution so i started saying a few years ago uh that i would refer to the customer service vision statement as the customer service action statement and i love that and our clients love it and so I had a a client, actually Sandy, from the Charlotte Police Department, that when she heard that, she asked me to to, uh, only call the customer service action statement because vision is aspirational. And like, I I kind of felt like an idiot. Like, yeah, no, no crap, Sandy. Thanks for telling us something we should have known. So I started saying, yeah, we got to get rid of the word vision. And only call it an action statement. But then it's something else is, is customer service. You know, customer service, you know, it, it means so many things. Service means so many things. I mean, you have accounting services, you have consulting services. But this really, when it's an action statement, and, and you'll understand shortly if you've never heard it before, it's what we want each and every employee to intentionally do uh, when they come in contact with someone. So that's an experience right? That's not a service. That's an experience. So we are, 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 here it is, folks. All right. Stop the presses. The customer, what was once called the customer service vision statement is now called 
Go ahead, Dave. You say it. The customer experience action statement. I love it. The customer experience action statement. Now, depending on your, your, your industry, you can replace that first word customer with clients, guest, patient, tenant, animals, whatever your customer, whoever your customer is, that is interchangeable. But I think the rest is experience action statement. That's what we're really talking about today. So now don't fret. If you've already rolled out your customer service vision statement, like we have in all our companies and all our clients, it doesn't change what your action statement is. Your action statement's still good. What we are doing, even in our own companies, is we're you know grandfathering in. So as we run out of credo cards and we run out of you know materials, when we reorder, we will rename. The you know from the customer service vision statement to the customer experience action statement. So don't go blow up any th- budgets by renaming it. But I'm really excited about this. So today's podcast is about the customer experience action statement. You good, Dave? Anything else to to go on that? Uh, you know, I, I, I again, I, it's probably going global right now. I'm sure it's trending. I'm sure it's viral. The news. I, I- I wish I had a TV in here so I could check that out, but I don't. But you know, one thing that I want to add, and I know we're going to touch on this, John, is it the title, the new title, action statement, makes so much sense. And if people are are new to to this particular part of the methodology, you, you'll pick up on that pretty quickly as we're having our conversation today. So the announcement has been made; it's official. TikTok, whatever that is, I think it's it's blowing up out there and. And yeah. you know, all the, the the clubhouse and I don't know all the social. A- ask is, is Lily around? Is your daughter around? Can we ask her uh, what all the social media platforms are now? I'll ask her after school when she gets home. Right, right. Here, here's the challenge for us. So this is obviously a big change. It's a new change. So for the rest of this podcast, our challenge yeah. is to refer to this as the customer experience action statement. And when we use the term service vision statement, that will be an automatic $5 into the uh, the jar that gets donated to Believe in Dreams chair. I love that. I love that. So anytime you say it, and that's a great uh, fun game that you help people. And listen, I also want to really emphasize the importance of words. Right. A lot of people think, you know, ah, you know, what the what my customer get. No, you know, who your customer is, you know, needs to be thought of in like, you know, changing your call center to a relationship center, right? As an example, to get your employees to realize what's their job. Changing, you know, the front desk receptionist, changing her title to director of first impressions and having that. In front, you know, Diane, director of first impressions, the pressure that puts on Diane, because you walk in and if Diane's, you know, on her cell phone or shuffling papers and won't look up until she's done, right? You, you, you're going to say, huh, some director of first impressions she is. Words matter. You know, we've talked about this in negative cues, you know, instead of saying, appointments or confer, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, what was that? The, the one thing, Dave, about? Uh, verify. Verify. Instead of saying verify, you, who, you know, you, who you are, you say confirm or update or, or, or things like that. All those things matter. And that's why the customer experience action statement really helps solidify what this is. So with no further ado, let's get into this. And the first question a lot of our CEOs, clients will ask, um, and, and Dave, you work with the most of them as a senior customer experience consultant. Is, All right, hold on. I already have mission statements, purpose statements, core values, and I can't get my employees to remember what they are. And now you want to add another statement. I, I, you know, I don't like this. So, so how do you answer that, Dave? Why, why are we asking someone to pile on another layer? Well, as we'll explain here in just a moment, the experience action statement is is so much different to a mission statement or a purpose statement or even core values. But my first answer to that pushback, John, when we hear it is, you know, quite honestly, I don't really care if your frontline person knows your mission statement, right? Mission statements are 
as you said before, aspirational. Those are to guide senior leadership in making decisions to hit organizational goals. And whether or not a frontline person knows it or not, it isn't all that important. What is important, though, is that they know and understand our experience action statement and know how to execute it. That, to me, is the big difference. I hundred percent agree. And, and listen, I'm a I'm an entrepreneur of three businesses, and and you know I I'm obsessed, probably more so than anyone else in the organization, with our mission. I'm obsessed with our purpose. But as you say, Dave, if, if you know, most employees don't remember uh, you know the, the 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 mission and the purpose, and 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 can't recite every core value. But if they got to remember anything, I really want them to me- remember the experience action statement, because that is what they have to deliver every day. So let's get an example. So the mission statement is who we want to be when we grow up. You know, it's not something we can do today. It's when we grow up in the next five to 10 years, we want to be the number one, you know, financial institution in the world, whatever industry you are. But that doesn't tell your bank teller, you know, what she's supposed to do right now in the interaction. The purpose is why. Right. But th- that usually is an inspirational as it should be, but it doesn't tell the teller or the loan officer, you know, what they should do. But that's where the customer experience action statement, I'm being very careful with not saying the other thing, Dave, because I don't want to go broke right. today. The customer <laughs> experience action statement is the definition is it's a clear call to action of what each and every employee should intentionally, I love that word, intentionally achieve with with every interaction, right? And and that's not only with a customer, but it's with a coworker. We want it to be with the UPS man, FedEx man, the stranger in an elevator, like like that's what I love about this. So so let me repeat that, because I love this definition. The customer experience action statement is a clear call to action of what each and every employee should intentionally be trying to achieve every time they interact with another person. So let me give you three quick examples of the difference. Mission, purpose, customer experience action statement. The mission for the Julius Group is to be the world's leading authority on world-class customer experience. So great. I love it. Uh, hopefully you love it, Dave. But you know, what does that tell you what to do today when you're on a call or you're in front of your clients and, and you're doing a workshop and you're helping them come up with ideas? That's that's a little big and it's supposed to be big. The purpose of the D. Julius Group and all our brands underneath the D. Julius Group is changing the world by creating a customer service revolution. Oh my God. Like I still get goosebumps with that. I love that. I, I think that's the greatest purpose ever. But change the world by creating a customer service revolution is not actionable. Okay. It's it's what we achieve if we do things right consistently for the next decade, two decades, but it can't, it's not something that results. It's not an outcome that happens right now in this moment or every moment. So that brings us to the Julius Group's service vision. Ah! I said it, Dave. I owe five dollars. Yeah. Ah, all right. I'll keep track. All right. So that brings us to the D. Julius Group's customer experience action statement. We would call it the client experience action statement, and that's to create moments that matter. That might sound hokey to you. We'll get into that later. But you know, we look at it when we're creating a, a customer experience action statement from the simplest, you know, ten second. Interaction it might be an email, someone asking us about something. It might be passing someone in a hall to the eight hour workshop, right? It's about the moment and, and, and every moment we want to put a burden on our, our, ourselves before we pick up this call, before we respond to this email, that we have to make this a moment that matters to our clients. So tell us more, Dave. Yeah, so here's the other really cool thing about a company's experience action statement is it really then serves as a rallying point, if you will, across the entire organization, right? And you alluded to this, John, it's for everybody. 
it doesn't matter if you are, as we would say in the hospitality sector, front of house dealing with customers on a regular basis or more back of house where you are serving those that are, are supporting those customers of ours. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you see customers multiple times a day or, or once or twice a week. It's for everybody, regardless of your role in, in, in the organization. And so it, it's, it's global. It's big picture. And, and it reminds all of us, it, 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 as they say, it gets us singing from the same hymnal, if you will, that experience is important to us and that we're all involved in delivering the experience on behalf of our brand and how important that is. So that's, that's one of the major reasons that uh, an action statement is, is so important. But another reason is, you know, a lot of times organizations get so focused on results, so in the weeds on results. And, and they're, they're very, very important, don't get me wrong. Things like profitability and, and, and sales numbers and retention of customers, all those things are hugely, hugely important. But sometimes organiz, organizations get so bogged down on those, lose sight of some other pretty important things such as, uh, is our experience consistent? Are our team members using empathy? Are our team members experts at what they do? Are they knowledgeable? Do they love their job? Are we recognizing them? Are we doing a good job internally? How easy are we to work with um, as an organization? Are we providing general, general hospitality? Are we, are we building rapport? All those things. And so again, a great experience action statement helps us keep the focus on all of those things, not just results. And really, at the end of the day, it all comes down to carpe momento, John, which is a great phrase that you coined a few years back. And that's the focus on every moment that you have with that customer, right? Every moment is an opportunity. And are your team members looking at it that way? Are they realizing that they have that opportunity? John mentioned stepping onto an elevator at your workplace with a stranger. Do your team members currently view that as an opportunity to, to seize that moment, to make something with that moment? And the answer for a lot of organizations before they have uh, an experience action statement is, is probably no, right? But that, that experience action statement helps organizations, helps team members to focus on doing just that, carpe momento, seizing that moment every single time they have that opportunity. And Dave, carpe momento, I don't know if that makes me bilingual, but yeah, it does. two languages, right? Uh, it's it's uh, Spanish combined with Latin. And that's why they call me the uh, CX gangster, right? I mean, that's, that's, what, that's the stuff I could just do uh, anytime. You just never know what I'm going to come up with next. Um, they, be right. a, uh, but you know, they call me that. They, you know, you're not limited by things like language, right? Right. Why, why limit yourself? Grammar, you know, yeah, that doesn't limit me. I have no restrictions <laughs> on what I may say or write. Absolutely. <laughs> so, the the next thing we wanted to talk about uh, when it comes to the customer experience action statement is how we begin, and and for us. And for the organizations we're working with, it's all about creating that empathy and how important it is for our team members to have that empathy for our customers. And we have to remember that there are so many reasons that that empathy does not exist. Things like the fact that in some businesses, our team members may not have ever been our customers, right? They, they just may not have been able to afford to be our customer or have the opportunity. And, and we as organizations have to remember that. How can, how can we expect them to be empathetic if they've never ever had that opportunity? There's other reasons too that sometimes our team members just become so transactional because maybe it's repetitiveness of the job or whatever it may be. And so that empathy can start to erode if we're not careful. And also there's there's such a thing as of having um, empathy fatigue, right? If you're in a, in a position in a role where your team members are, are dealing with difficult things over and over and over again, they can start to have that, that empathy erode in those cases as well. So it's our jobs as organizations to make sure that our 
team members are empathetic to our, our customers' needs, whatever, whoever our customers are. And one of the ways we do that is by creating a day in the life of a customer video uh, or, or at least that storyline, storyboard it. And so there was a, um, a great podcast a few episodes ago. It was episode 39, if you missed it and wanted to go back and, and listen, where, where John and, and Jess Pischel really went through the, the importance of creating a day in the life, but also some of the how-to to create a day in the life because it's such a, a strong tool for focusing on that empathy and making sure that you're renewing that feeling of empathy with your team members. And, and one, of the, one of the tools that we do to start that is to create customer avatars. And that's also referenced in episode 39 if you wanna go back and listen to that. Customer avatars can be such an important tool so that our team members understand who our primary customers are. And then we can start to dissect what are the things that they have going in their lives? What, what, what happens in their days before they pick up the phone and call us, before they walk into our location, before we pick up the phone and call them? What are all those things that are transpiring that, that can cause those issues, can cause that stress? Things we need to be mindful of leading up to the interaction that we will be having with them. So again, if you'd like to learn more on a day in the life of a customer and creating avatars and and, and how powerful that can be, I would encourage you to go back and listen to episode 39 if you didn't have a chance to listen to that one yet, because it is it is a very powerful tool. And Dave, uh, FYI, for the episode 39, there is links on the show notes to uh, a few great videos of, of our clients, and I believe maybe our own day in the life, so you can get an idea. But yeah, as you say, the customer experience action statement makes more sense, total sense, when you first lead with the day in the life of your customer client and, and you see what they're going through, then you're like, oh, that's why we need to, and whatever your, your, your customer experience action statement is. Absolutely. It, it, it's such a great lead into helping to create. As a matter of fact, it's part of our process. When we're working with an organization to create their action statement, one of the exercises we do with that, that creation team is go through the process of um, talking about their customers and storyboarding what that day in the life looks like and, and talking about their avatars and, and some of their needs, their wants, their stresses, because it's a great lead into helping us create that action statement itself. And again, the action statement as John has already defined, is a clear call to action of what each and every employee should be intentionally trying to achieve, right? We want this top of mind. So they're trying to live up to this every time they have that interaction opportunity with the customer. And so that's the definition. And another, another tool that we use to help us create that is we ask a couple of questions kind of early on in the creation process. And we say, you know, think about this. After, after a customer comes in contact with you, your team member calls in, walks in, whatever that looks like in your business, how do you want your customer to feel emotionally every time? No excuses, right? Whether whether you had exactly what they wanted, whether you couldn't, but you had to place it on it, whatever that scenario could be. So that's one question to be thinking about. How do you want them to feel emotionally after that interaction? And the second question that, that we want them to be thinking about as well is, how do you want your customers to describe their interaction with you, right? If they were going out to Yelp or just, just telling a friend on the phone as they're driving away, how would you like them to describe that interaction? What words would you like them to use? Because that could be pretty powerful to help us create what we want this action statement to encompass. Love it. Love it. And so, you know, we'll, we'll give a, a, another example. And, and, and now we're, we're going to get into customer experience action statement examples, right? We, we've kind of teed it up, the importance, but really, you, you, you know, by now you're probably saying, okay, give me some examples. So several years ago, uh, you know, more than a decade ago, Starbucks was growing too fast. And they got into trouble and, and they had to close a lot of locations. And Howard Schultz wrote an internal memo that went public 
he didn't mean for it to, but it was the commoditization of the Starbucks experience. Basically, they got watered down by their growth. And we always say nothing will kill your customer experience faster than rapid growth because you just start compromising in areas you never compromised before. So one of the highlights of, of my professional career was Starbucks hired us and we, we went in and helped this transformational project and worked with the, you know, the key people, their executive team and from every team to recreate their, at the time was a customer service action statement. That doesn't, uh, I don't get penalized for that, Dave. Um, that was intentional because that's what it was called. You know, back then their statement was to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup and one neighborhood at a time. You know, when I heard that, I'm like, that's awesome. Right. I mean, that's, that's great. But right. if, you, if you go back to our rules, what does that mean, right? You know, how does a barista in a 90 second interaction inspire and nurture the human spirit? And they basically told me, yeah, we love it. It's Howard Schultz's words. We moved up to our purpose because that can happen over the course of 200 visits a couple of years, but it doesn't happen each and every time. And, and they said they wanted it, you know, to be measurable, observable, accountable, and trainable right? Measurable, observable, accountable, and trainable. Where they, you know, uh, Craig Russell, the vice president of, of U.S. store operations at the time, who I was working with at Starbucks said, you know, you know, theoretically, I want to be able to stand next to a barista partner and watch them interact with a, a customer and say yes or no. And you can't say yes or no to inspire and nurture the human spirit. You know, it, it's not possible. So, we worked on Starbucks uh, day in the life of a customer, which is all of us, right? Whether you go to Starbucks or not, it's everyone on this podcast listening. It's the craziness of our life, the running, running, running. And, you know, what we realized uh, is Starbucks can't change what's going to happen to you today. If you're going to get a flat tire, you're going to get a flat tire. Starbucks can't help you avoid that. If you're going to sign a big client, you're going to sign a big client. If you're not going to sign, if a big client doesn't resign, that's going to happen regardless. But what Starbucks, you know, their, their part in your day is that, that when you come in, it's an escape. It's a, an opportunity to rejuvenate. It's an opportunity to catch up, to get caffeinated, you know, literally and figuratively. So we launched the new Starbucks customer experience action statement. And one of the things is the difference between the, the action statement, the other difference is it's internal. It's not to be advertised externally. Like you go to most people's websites, their mission and purpose and core values are on there as they should be. I, I think it's great to go to about us and you look and all right, this is what the company values. That's great. But the customer experience action statement should only be advertised to your employees, your team members, right? A a a because it's what you want them to achieve. It's not to tell the customers what we're trying to do. It's to make the customers feel that. So the, the Starbucks, they put it on in the inside of their green apron. Why? Because it's not for the cu customer to see, it's for the barista to see 20 times a day when they're taking that on and putting it off. So the customer experience action statement for Starbucks is to make every moment right. Think about that, to make every moment right. A lot of times that's easy. A lot of times, you know, Dave will come in and he'll order his, his, his frappuccino with this, this, this. Dave's kind of a diva with his coffee. Uh, you know, he has like 10 or 12 things. That it's like a, a you know, concoction. And, and, you know, sometimes they know it. Before he even orders, sometimes they, you know, don't know it, but they get it right, 90 seconds. And then sometimes he, he's made to wait too long or they miss one of his, you know, formula. They leave something out and he has to go back and say, this isn't soy or this isn't sugar free or whatever that may be. And, and that's going to happen especially with the volume that they see. So they still have to make that moment right with him with a sincere apology, or if it was a real inconvenience, they might be, you know, giving him his next drink, you know, uh, on the house. So that's Starbucks and the evolution of Starbucks 
customer experience action statement. And so many of our clients, as you know, Dave, have loved the metaphor of putting it on the inside of your green apron. So we always ask our clients, what is going to be your green apron? How are you going to advertise your customer experience action statement that everyone sees that works for you? Right. And, you know, it, it also really helps us explain the point that you just mentioned, John, that this this isn't your next marketing tagline, right? As, as we talk about uh, earlier, when we create a service vision, we want, we want everyone to be a part of it, right? It's global. It represents all of your organization. So we want leadership from, from marketing, from sales, from, from operations. We want all those teams represented in the creation of this because it is for everybody. But we sometimes have to remind the marketing folks that this isn't a tagline, right? This isn't, hey, customer, we love you, so come in and we'll do this and we'll do that. that, that this is really something that should be should be felt, not seen. And so that Starbucks apron is, is such a great example of, of doing just that. You know, the other thing that I wanted to bring up about creating the experience action statement is another exercise that we do that I feel is, is so worthwhile and so helpful. And that is going and talking about raving fans, right? So raving fans, obviously the um, the great book by by Ken Blanchard and, and, and talks about what your raving fans are saying. When we're doing a workshop, we actually ask participants, our, our project lead, to gather raving fan comments. So when we're doing really, really well, what are people saying? Whether those came in through emails, whether they're on a survey, whether they're on Yelp, what, what do our what are our customers saying when they're really, really happy with us? So we look for stories about that because we want to highlight those key words, right? When when people are happy with us. What are they saying? Because those are the words that we want our team members to be living up to, to be looking for, to be trying to get to with our action statement. And a lot of times, some of those words may, may be a part of our action statement when, when, we're, when we're all said and done with it. So it's such a great, great exercise to be really focused on what people are saying about us when we're doing well and really looking at the words that they are using. Again, to touch on the point that you brought up earlier, John, that, that words really do matter. So what are people saying when they're so happy with us that they're taking the time to write in or tell their friends, put it up on social, whatever it is they're doing? What are the actual words that they're using? And the other thing about a an experience action statement is that at the end of the day, we want it to, to hit our acronym of URX. And so if you've been around the DeJulius group for a while, you may know exactly what URX means. If, if, you're, if you're new to us, maybe you haven't heard that yet. For us, URX is a reminder that you are the experience, right? So think about that for a minute. Do, do your team members right now, if, if you don't have a customer experience action statement at, at your place of work, do your team members right now know that they are the experience on behalf of the brand at the moment they're interacting with your customers? Well, unless you've told them that, chances are the answer is probably no, they don't. They're not, they're not thinking that way. They're not thinking that not only am I, am I doing my job right now, but I am also the experience on behalf of the organization, right? So that's Another thing that a really strong customer experience action statement delivers, it delivers that, that reminder to all of our team members that they are the experience on behalf of our brand. They, they are that experience at that moment, whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person, whether it's through chat, it could even be digital, but they are providing the experience on behalf of the brand. So they need to be thinking that way, right? It needs, it needs to be a reminder to them that they have to be thinking that way each and every time. One thing you said that I really liked uh, was your customer experience action statement needs to be felt, not heard. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and it isn't for marketing. You know, I, I always make the joke that we won't let marketing in the customer experience action statement workshop. And, and we do. And marketing's brilliant, but we don't want it to be a slogan, you know, that throws on a billboard. It, we want it to be felt by by your team members felt that, you know, they have to deliver it. And, and it's not just a jingle or, or, or you know, a slogan of the month. Absolutely. So, you know, 
We've been talking about action statements quite a bit. Let's let's share some examples, John, because we, we have a lot of great examples from, from clients of ours. And I'm, I'm going to start with one from our very own sister company, John Robert Spa, uh, in on the east side of Cleveland, Ohio. And, and their customer experience action statement is quite simply this, to be the best experience of our guest's day. Now, when you when you first hear that on its surface, you might be thinking, well, if, if I'm going to a salon and spa, it probably should be the best experience of my day, right? And, and you're absolutely right. But what remember, this is internal. This is not external. This is a reminder internal to all those team members. So what this does is it serves as a great reminder that everything they do adds up to this being the best experience to that guest day. When they walk into that facility, it needs to be the best welcome they've had all day, the best greeting. When they call to make the appointment, it needs to be the best phone call they've made all day. So it really focuses on all those little little interactions lead up to the appointment, the experience itself, and really places the importance on all those things, which could otherwise get lost if it wasn't such a, a an important piece of this particular action statement. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So the next one that I want to share is with a, a huge chain of, of restaurants. The parent company is Restaurants Unlimited, and they're headquartered in Seattle, but they have so many different brands and from high end to casual, fast casual. But theirs is to make every guest feel like our only one, to make every guest feel like our only one. And, and a lot of times you'll get crickets when you first release a, a, a customer experience action statement because they don't understand all that went into it and the thinking and arguing and rational and logic. But so you got to think about that, that these restaurants are crazy busy. And, you know, they just have people walking in after another and they're turning over tables and, you know, the, the hostess is, you know, just taking two at a time. And, and so they, they really want everyone to slow down. And when the hostess comes back up or the next family walks in, you know, how would you treat that family, that guest, if they were all you had today, they were your only one. And it even applies to headquarters, because they have 60, 80 different locations. And when a GM is calling IT at headquarters or marketing or HR, and you know, so many headquarters can be guilty of treating operations, the field, their stores as an interruption versus the reason why they have a job. How would you treat that location if that was our only location? Not, not that we had 80, we only have one. Oh, well, that would be a different story. So, so that's really what the making every guest feel like our only one is, is, is they deserve to feel, they don't, they shouldn't feel like you're, you're 8 PM, uh, table 84. They need to feel like, I mean, this is their night out and you don't know, you know, why or how long it's been since their last night out, especially in today's world. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and kind of along those lines, uh, we're going to stay in the in the restaurant world on our next example, John, and, and talk about Domino's Pizza. We had the opportunity to work with RPM Pizza, which is the largest franchisee of Domino's and, and all of their locations. And we helped them create a service vision statement back then, which is now the action statement. And, and quite simply, theirs is creating smiles by making lives easier. And it's it's actionable and simplistic all at the same time, which is one of the reasons I, I love it so much. It's it's reminding their team members that you know we're already making lives easier just just based on the fact that you called up and decided to order from us as a, as opposed to going home and, and making dinner. We're, we're starting to make your life easier, right? We're providing that to you already. Now the goal is ours to to create some smiles along the way, right? To make sure that that we're providing the best experience we can in that ordering process, in that delivery process. And so it really puts the onus back on their team members to be focused on creating those smiles as they go about their day to day uh, and, and really actionable for them and, and really helped move the needle for them. Yeah, 100%. And, and 
who isn't happy when uh, you know pizza? Pizza solves everyone, you know, and, and and it makes life easier because you know it gives you your time back. It gives you another forty five minutes in a day, uh, not yours, but Tracy's, uh, because I I, right. I don't think you cook. Uh, so uh, all right, let's get to uh, a big popular brand is Chick Fil A, and I love their customer experience action statement. It's where guests are cared for unlike anywhere else. And I love this for several reasons, right? It, it is a directive action, uh, actionable, measurable, observable, trainable, but it also tells, let's not be the best experience in the fast food industry. Um, a, that's a low benchmark. And B, if, if our guests are coming in today at lunch, a very likely possibility is they aren't then going to Taco Bell, Burger King, or McDonald's right after to compare. They're probably done, you know, for a while, the day, a couple days with using a, a fast food uh, restaurant. So we want it to be like the Disney or Chick-fil-A wants it to be like the Disney hangover, where when you come back from Disney, your first two days of experiences with every other business stink by comparison. And so, you know, Chick-fil-A wants it when you, you, you go from Chick-fil-A to the doctor's office or shopping or, or, or the hair salon, it's a, you know, that they say no one cared about me, you know, in business like they did at Chick-fil-A and why can't everyone? And that's what is called the Chick-fil-A hangover. Interested in bringing John or the DeJulius Group team to work with your team? Message us today to schedule a keynote workshop to create your own customer experience action statement or a full consulting project. Email claudia at thedejuliusgroup.com to get started. Sticking with well-known brands, John, the next example we have is probably from the, the granddaddy of them all, as they say, when it comes to experience, and that's the Ritz-Carlton, who's been so well-known for the experience they deliver for so many years. And their experience action statement is quite simply, ladies and gentlemen, serving ladies and gentlemen. And, and I love this one because it's simplistic and yet a reminder that it, it focuses internally on who they need to be to perform their, their duties, right? Ladies and gentlemen. And it also puts that um, uh, focus on who their customers are, the ladies and gentlemen that they are serving. So again, it's so simplistic. Yet at the same time, it's it's pretty complex because it has so many pieces. It's focusing on the internal culture. It's focusing on their guests' experience. It does so many things in that little action-packed statement. And so that one is is truly, truly unique and obviously has worked so well for them throughout the years. I agree. I agree. Now we're going to go from one extreme, probably the most legendary brands uh, in the world to one that probably most of you've never heard of. And it's a, it's a salon just outside of Chicago called uh, Touche. And, and the reason why I use it, 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 it I love their service vision. I, oh, I did it again. I owe $10. I love their experience action statements. And, you know, you, you're, you're probably going to, you know, say, really? But if you think about it, Here's Touche's Salon's customer experience action statement. Happy people making people happy, right? That, that sounds simple, but man, if that's what you do, and is it measurable? Heck yeah. I can tell if my employee's happy, right? Right now, right in this moment. And I can tell if they're making the guest, the client happy. Is, is you know, are, are they both smiling? You know, during it, at the end of the interaction, right? Are people walking away smiling? Do, am I seeing tea? So I, I put that in there, uh, not because of the brand, but because of the, the powerful of a simple customer experience action team. We, we don't want it to be uh, 10 words. We don't want it to be sentences. And, and something else that we, we, we always recommend to our, our, our clients is a lot of people will populate it with make you know, make them happy. Right? I'm thinking the most generic, uh, um, or, or let's go to Domino's, creating smiles and making lives easier. But then they will, you know, people will add it, you know, in the first iteration, every customer, every time. And you don't need that. That's what a, a customer experience action statement is. So you take that off because that's just, you know, wording it 
and you keep it simple. You don't have to say every customer every time. That is implied. It's not like, man, I nailed it with my 10 o'clock, not so much with my 11 or 12. No, you got to do it every time. Intentionally, you know, uh, uh, deliver this every time. So you don't want to word, you know, uh, uh, build up the words in your your experience action statement. You want to reduce them. Absolutely. And here's another brand that uh, most of our listeners might not be familiar with because they are a business to business. And so unless you are in the healthcare industry, you may not have heard of Image First. And what Image First does is they are a healthcare launderer. So they, they provide healthcare systems, hospitals, clinics with all the things they need to operate, including linens, doctor scrubs, so many things that are behind the scenes for your visit to a hospital or a doctor's office. And we got the opportunity to create uh, an experience action statement with them. And theirs is create a positive moment with every interaction. And what really sticks out to me with their action statement is the is the fact that it's every interaction and they they specifically chose those words because in their case they realized that that their team members were coming in contact with so many individuals so if if a team member was on site for a delivery of course they were going to see the the person who was responsible the person who signed the contract on the on the end of the the hospital system uh, the person that oversees the relationship, they were going to have that that contact and, and make sure everything was okay. And they want to make sure that they create that positive moment. But then they expanded upon that and said, what about all these other people we're coming in contact with while we're wearing our image first uniform? We're coming in, in contact with, with doctors, nurses, patients, family members of patients, all these folks that they would have interactions with in just the course of going through their day to day. And so they really wanted to have that focus on creating that positive moment with all of those possible interactions, not just the person who's signing the check, but all of those interactions uh, that they have across their day. And so that really became their initiative as an organization, not only with, with external folks, but also internally from team member to team member. So it was really uh, an amazing kickoff to, to what turned out to be uh, an amazing in initiative that's still going strong with Image First. Yeah, I love that. And then we get the Nemecolon, uh Woodlands Resort and Spa. They are a five diamond property in Western PA. And this is, is where I got Carpe Momentum from. Uh, this just reminded me, Dave, this is what inspired me. It's own every moment that their customer experience or guest experience statement is own every moment. And, and that goes about the micro moments that, you know, from the check-in to valet to walking by a guest and you might be housekeeping, you might be on a ladder changing a light and you see them struggling with luggage. You get off that and you help them with their luggage. You, you beat the greet, own every moment. I love that one, love it. Uh, another one I wanna share is a uh, hospital system that I'm having the great opportunity of working with right now as we speak. It's, it's Flagler Health Plus. They are located in St. Augustine, Florida, down there in St. John's County in the Northeast corner of Florida. And they're a health system with a, with a hospital kind of at its core, but then satellite locations uh, around their, their vicinity. And so when we were working on their action statement, we had a, a lot of conversations about what could and should be in there. And so their action statement is really made up of, of, of three concepts, if you will, and I'll share it with you. Their statement is to provide clarity, kindness, and peace of mind. And so think about that for a minute. If you've ever gone to a doctor's office or a hospital visit, maybe you're a little overwhelmed, concerned, fearful. So it really puts a focus back on making sure that they, they are providing that clarity, that they're not speaking in, in terminology that you don't understand or in acronyms that people outside of healthcare don't understand. And then of course, simply reminding their, their folks to do it with kindness. And not to say that they weren't, because they were, but again, we can all become so transactional or empathy fatigued in their case in the healthcare industry. So just a reminder of, of focusing on that kindness 
And then also focusing on providing that peace of mind, right? How, how can we, how can we help them? How can we, how can we help with their comfort um, and provide that peace of mind throughout that, that interaction that we're having with them? So um, a great one that was uh, rolled out recently at Flagler Health Plus and, and has been making a, a, a great impact so far. I love it. I love it. And let's, uh, the De Jewish group, we already said it, create moments that matter, but it really just goes to uh, focusing on the micro moments and not the results because our results may take, you know, three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months. Oh, it's over the course of many interactions and workshops and, you know, consulting and can't wait for that. Uh, we got to make sure every time our clients interact with us, and it's not just about you know the consultant. It's about support. It's about you know HR. It's about anyone they could be dealing with internally, externally. That they are just. It, it, it's a great moment, right? It, even they were they were asking for something you know minuscule. They're asking for handouts or uh, to order a hundred books but that we do it so professionally that they, you know, have, you know, they're surprised at what a, 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 a great moment that was, um, you know, in their day. I'll give you another example too, John. We had a, we had a situation recently where one of our coaches needed something and the person he asked for it was, was tied up, was, was with the client, couldn't get to it. She asked someone else to do it and they delivered it almost immediately. And he was so overwhelmed that, a different team member would jump in and make sure that he was taken care of and had what he needed and, and how impactful that is, right? So sometimes something as simple as teamwork, right? So we're all working as as team members to create those moments as ma that matter. And sometimes we have to work together to do that. A hundred percent. The the next one I wanted to, to bring up, John, is is Henson First. Now they are they are attorneys, they're personal injury attorneys. And they created a, a service vision. And it sounds a little bit like Flagler's, you know, because, you know, obviously when they're personal injury attorneys, they have a lot of people that are going through health care and uncertainty. Here's, here's their action statement. It's creating peace of mind one moment at a time. And one of the things that really stood out to me as we were creating this particular action statement is what kept coming up is, they get asked a lot of questions in, in their industry. They get asked a lot of questions that they don't have answers to, right? When someone's going through a personal injury case, maybe saying, how long is this going to take? Or how much do you think we're going to get? Um, will we get anything at all? All these questions that, you know, don't have a crystal ball. They don't have the answers to. They're giving an educated guess. So what they really wanted to do in their business was make sure that they were able to focus on what information can they provide? So how can they provide that peace of mind with the information they do know or based on their experience, what they what they can share about what's going to be happening? And, and again, making that difference to, to provide that, that comfort and provide that understanding. So you know, it, it's just such a great example of how, how an action statement can work really in, in any industry. Yeah, I love it. And then uh, the final example we want to give is something that uh, we're currently doing, and it's a total new industry to us, and it's exciting, and, and that is policing. And the uh, Charlotte Police Department, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, which uh, I did a podcast uh, previously uh, interviewing the Chief uh, Jennings from Charlotte uh, about his vision of creating the Chick-fil-A of policing. So their service experience action statement, I'm up to a uh, $15 day. Man, you made it expensive. It used to be a dollar. Wow. I All know. Right. The Charlotte uh, Mecklenburg Police Department's customer experience action statement is earn a genuine thank you. And again, you might think, what? Come on, but think about policing, especially today. But you know, police uh, interacting with the police is a grudge buy. No one wants to do it. It's not something you're excited about. Um, typically, uh, you know, when you you deal with an officer or, or the police department, it, it's it's not positive. It, it might be your worst day, uh, worst day of the year. 
And so they have to be at their best when when others are at their worst. And, you know, world class means uh, they still enforce the law. So maybe they're writing your ticket. Maybe they're writing your, your child a ticket. And that's OK, because it's, it's there to keep keep your community safe. So if they do it in a way that they can earn a genuine thank you uh, versus being, you know, stoic and whatever we stereotype policing, I, I, I just love that. Yeah, it, it's it's so amazing. And Chief Jennings is, you know, if, if you haven't listened to that pa- podcast, go back and give it a listen because it's it's really something. So gr- great work on that one, John. The the other thing we want to talk about today is, you know, we we create the customer experience action statement, but it doesn't stand alone, right? When we go through the process, when when we're creating this, we also um, we also create what we refer to as the supporting pillars. And here's why. The, the customer experience action statement is the what. It's the what we want our team members to be delivering every single time. It's the what we want our customers to be feeling every single time. And the supporting pillars that we create are, are really the, the how we get there. And so John brought up something very important earlier. We, we really wanna make sure that we're not overloading the action statement that it's not too long, that we're not trying to jam too much in there, things like every customer every time, because that, that's kind of known. But also we, we sometimes have this desire to put as much in there as we can. So the, the pillars are designed to provide our team members with how, but also to take some of the burden off the statement itself. So we don't have to jam too much in that action statement because we have the pillars or the how to support that. And so, before I get into, uh, before John and I get into some examples of what pillars can look like from some of our clients, uh, I just want to go a little deeper on the three pillars because each pillar does represent something in particular, right? They're, they're very specific in what they represent. So the first pillar represents our expertise, right? Us being the best at what we do, whatever it is that we do for the organization. We're the best, uh, we're the best pizza makers, we're the best doctors, the best nurses, the best delivery drivers, whatever it is that we do, we're the best at it. And and we're focused on quality, our technical ability, operationally excellent, all those things. The second pillar comes in as and focuses on the actual customer interaction. So words like hospitality, building that relationship, personalizing the experience, typically fall under fall under that that um, that customer interaction pillar. And then the last pillar focuses on where can we go above and beyond? When, when that opportunity exists, what are the words, what, what do we want our team members focused on to take it a step further, to go a little above and beyond, to, to surprise and delight? Again, when that opportunity presents itself. So so words that that would be uh, falling into that category could include things like exceeding or looking for that opportunity, being proactive, unexpected. So again, those three pillars are very specific, expertise, customer interaction, and above and beyond. And, and we have them for a very specific reason too, because we know that if we're rolling out this customer experience initiative, and we're starting with a customer experience action statement they're going to roll out, people are going to become focused on that, which is great, but we can't take our eye off the ball of our expertise or being operationally excellent. That needs to be part of the equation as well, because quite honestly, we're not going to, we're not going to succeed at customer experience if our operational operational excellence isn't right there with us, if we're not, if it's not a focus of ours. So it's so important to keep our eye on all three of those pillars as we go through the process. So John, you were gonna start us off with a with an example, right? Yeah, let's go back to uh, our our John Roberts spa guest experience action statement and, and, and well, the pillars. Um, you know, the, the 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 statement was to be the best experience in our guest day, and the pillars are mastering emotional connection and give more. And they line up with exactly what you described. Mastering is that no one better be better at, at, at John Roberts' team members at what they do. But mastering is intentional because it's, 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 not, uh, it's not master. Mastering, never you never stop. You never stop learning. You never stop being cutting edge. Emotional connection, that's the, the, the uh, 
the customer interaction pillar, and then the give more is the the above and beyond pillar. Yeah, it's so so helpful, so important. Um, another example is one that we already shared when John covered Restaurants Unlimited and their their action statement of make every guest feel like our only one. But their 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 pillar words are so strong as well. Their pillars are make it right, make it special, make it happen. So make it right is all about them being operationally excellent. Get it right the first time, the order, the delivery, whatever that is, make it right. And then make it special. How can they How can they personalize? How can they make that delivery or whatever it is they're doing special to that customer? And then of course they're above and beyond is make it happen, right? If there's an opportunity to go above and beyond, to, to surprise and delight, go a little more, give a little more, go ahead, make it happen. All right, let's complete nutrition uh, is something that we didn't share uh, before, but I love their three pillars, which is connect, consult, and commit. Connect, consult, and commit. You know, they're easy, they're memorable. And a- a- as a lot of our clients that have done, they flip flop pillar one and pillar two, which is totally allowed. They move their expertise pillar to the second one, which is consult, and they move their their customer interaction pillar to the first one, which is connect. And the reason being, and this logic works in this case, is you walk into a, a complete nutrition, and, and and you get you know uh, you know you, you feel in a retail environment that these these reps that are coming up to you and, and associates are, are just trying to sell you everything and anything. So that's why they want you to make a connection. Find some in common. Why? What's what? What they're looking for, and then once you establish a connection that you're a human being and you're here to help, then they are more likely to trust your expertise, which is connect, consult, and then commit is their above and beyond pillar. I have one I want to share, John, now, which is always a favorite of our audiences, and it comes to us from Superior Glove. So Superior Glove is a business to business organization based in Acton, Ontario, Canada. So just a little west of of Toronto. And they they manufacture gloves, um, safety gloves for uh, for businesses across the globe. And so um, their three pillars, and again, people love these, are, are quite simply know it, show it, and own it. So know it is all about be the, be the best at what you do. If you work in, in customer service, know our product, know our competitor's product in case you have to substitute something, right? So, so know, know those things back, backwards and forwards. And then show it is obviously all about the interaction. So how can you show it to our customers? How can you display our genuine hospitality to our customers? And then own it obviously is the buck stops with you. So if you have an opportunity to go above and beyond, you take it, you're, 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 you are, you're being proactive, all those things that we talk about in that, in that above and beyond pillar. So again, know it, show it and own it. Yeah. You know, Dave, that's a mic drop. I mean, that, you know, when we say that, it's like, we'll, we'll get, you know, people raising their hands saying, can we just use theirs? And, yeah. uh, you know, you know, it, it is great. And, and you'll see a lot of, them. you know, the, 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 you, you want to be clever and that's clever as long as it's, it's, it's great. And you just don't be clever for the sake of being clever. Um, know it, show it, own it, uh, connect, consult, commit, make it right, make it special, make it happen. Those are all great. And they're also good, but they're easy to remember. So let's go back to, uh, the Charlotte police department, uh, earn a genuine thank you. So, so keeping with their E, earn a genuine thank you, their three pillars are, are uh, empathize, educate, and exceed. So that's easier to remember, but they fit. And, and like uh, Complete Nutrition, they flip-flopped their pillar one and pillar two. Um, first, you got to empathize, which is the human interaction. Then, then, then you want to educate them why, what's happening, what, you know, provide certainty you know, and, and why this is a law or why, you know, wh- why you're doing what you're doing. And then exceed is the above and beyond pillar. So again, earn a genuine thank you, empathize, exceed, I'm sorry, empathize, educate, and exceed. Those are all ease. They work, they fit, and and they're easy to remember. They sure are. Great example. I love that one. I'm also going to touch on ours, the DeJulius group. And, and John, you already talked about our action statement, create moments that matter. Our pillars are know more, care more, and give more, 
right? So, so no more is making sure that we are the best at what we do, uh, that we obsess over our knowledge, that we're always eager to learn more, to make sure that we are the best at what we do. In our case, it's it's customer experience and, and consulting our clients in, in creating their own tools. Um, care more is making sure that, that we care more than anybody else about our clients who we're dealing with, uh, who we're working with internally, externally. And I think we do a really great job of that one. And then give more, looking for what else we could be doing. If someone, you always give this great example, John, if, if someone's asking for A, well, let's see how we can give them B and C as well, right? If it's gonna add value, if it's really gonna advocate for them and help them get where they need to be, um, look for those opportunities to, to give more as, as an individual and as an organization. You're not giving away services or money. You know, it's just, it's just you know, giving a little bit more than they expect. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And then uh, the last one we'll share with you, uh, just because it's a unique industry and it applies to every industry, is we worked with the Ohio State Athletic Department covering a lot of their uh, sports and the Ohio State, which is pretty well known. So their service, 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 service experience action statement, I think that's up to 20, uh, maybe more. Um, the, their their uh, experience action statement is building life champions. And obviously their customer here that they're focused on is, is the student and, and parents, right? You're recruiting when you're recruiting a, you know, a, a huge uh, high school prospect, every, every major college is probably recruiting that same prospect. So how are you going to differentiate yourself? So they say, we help build life champions and through academics, character, and athletics, right? We're going to make sure they get a degree. We're going to build their character. And oh, by the way, our coaching staff is going to, you know, make them the best at whatever sport they're recruiting. So that was really cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's so cool when you think of all the applications here, right? Does We always say it doesn't matter what your business model is, what your industry is, and, and that's living proof right there. So just a, a really quick recap on the pillars themselves and the examples that we just shared. Again, when, when you're looking to create pillars to support your customer experience action statement, it's all about focusing on the quality or your operational excellence, focusing on your customer interaction and those, those potential touch points, and then your team members knowing how they can go above and beyond. And that's, that's how you truly support a great customer experience action statement. And finally, something I love and, 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 and so many people love, we're, we're going to show, we're going to include a picture of this, a link to a picture is when you're all done with your customer experience action statement, you've, you've created it and, and created the, the uh, action statement and the three pillars. And we've also talked about in a previous podcast, creating your, your, your business non-negotiables, your never and always. When you kind of get that, then you create your, your customer service manual. And, and this is what people love the most. It's a little credo card, right? And we're going to you know, attach a picture in the show notes. And it's a simple bifold that everyone carries. And you know, people love that. It's not a it's not a workbook. It's it's not a, a a you know big binder, three ring binder with pages. This is your customer service manual, and and it has the you know the 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 uh, the experience action statement. It has the the three pillars. And it has your nevers and always, and the, just the simplicity of that. And that really handles ninety five to ninety eight percent of all customer interactions. And if you do that, if you crush that, you will, you will just be in a different stratosphere of, of, of the customer experience you deliver. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's one of those things when we go into organizations and you see team members carrying those around and that they have them handy and they have it to refer to, or if the organization is conducting huddles, they, they pull those out because that's part of their huddle conversation as a reference point. It, it's such a, uh, an inexpensive, but also very, very impactful tool for organizations to have. All right, Dave, I love this. I love the uh, customer experience action statement. How much do I owe uh, to believe in dreams? So here's the final count, John. I have you at $20. Okay. And 
I have me at five because I had one slip, but I, I didn't bring it up because I was on kind of a roll. I didn't want to lose my train of thought. So we have an even $25 going to Believe in Dreams today. Believe in Dreams, which is one of our organizations and it's a great organization. Check it out. I'll provide the uh, link, but it's about making dreams come true from kids who have persevered through amazing hardships and uh, life trauma. But it was a good game, a good penalty uh, to have fun with. I, you know, listen, I, I really hope you got a lot out of this. I, I, we love our, our customer experience action statement. That's why it is commandment number one, because it's your, it's your company's North Star. Um, it, it's what everyone has to be intended to do. It's a game changer of your culture. It, it, it makes your company uh, from the CEO down to the warehouse to, to, to the, the newest employee that start next week realize, whoa, I'm not in Kansas anymore. I'm not at the Gap anymore. I'm not at whatever job they, they were. Um, it, it's a game changer. of it, This is a customer obsessed organization. I love our, our uh, the uh, customer experience action statement, the, the, everything it, it represents. And, you know, Dave, you could talk about this really quick. It, it, it's not something you launch once and there's no ribbon cutting ceremony to this. It is something that you visit daily, daily. If you want to give some examples of that, Dave, and, and we'll uh, wrap up. Yeah, absolutely, John. So, you know, we, we typically, when when we create the action statement, we typically have, you know, some form of a rollout to create excitement, right? We want it to be a big deal, whether it's, a, you know, a keynote and it's something where you can get the entire team together at a, at a company outing, at, a, at an annual meeting, whatever that looks like, to make kind of a big splash. But then you're absolutely right. We have to have a plan in place after that. You know, the, the rollout gets people excited, but then we have a, a plan in place to make sure that it's becomes part of our daily conversation each and every day, whether that's through huddles, whether that's making sure that our leaders, and when I say leaders, I mean you know anyone who supervises out there actively looking for people who are executing our service vision, living up to our pillars and calling them out, giving them a shout out um, and doing that publicly, praising publicly as we always say. So it, it's, it's such a, a great opportunity to, to make sure that it becomes becomes part of who you are as an organization. It needs to become part of your DNA. Totally agree. Thank you, Murray, the Merster, uh, for a, a, a great episode. Thank you, Revolutionaries, to for joining us for episode 43 for the customer experience action statement. I will not forget that um, for the rest of today, at least. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Dave, I appreciate having you and your brilliance as always. Well, thanks for having me on, John, today. It's uh, great to spend some time with you and with all of the revolutionaries out there. Okay, everyone, we will see you next week for podcast number 44. Join us this fall for the Customer Service Revolution Conference, live in Cleveland, Ohio. Tickets are on sale now at CustomerServiceRevolution.com. Thanks for being part of the revolution. We hope you're enjoying the podcast and would love to hear your feedback. Leave us a review and be sure to subscribe to hear more episodes on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 